Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Identity in 15, part by WC2 Identity Server. I'm Dinali Rasmin Dabarera, a senior solutions engineer for IAM WC2. So today, let's look at just-in-time provisioning and how just-in-time provisioning can be configured with WC2 Identity Server. So for people who are new to just-in-time provisioning, let me tell you what is just-in-time provisioning. So actually, just-in-time provisioning is, uh, is an automated way of creating users during the authentication flow when you are logging to an application. So actually, we provision accounts, provision user accounts from a federation from a federated identity provider during the federation flow. So for example, so if you log into your shopping cart application with your Google account, then your shopping cart system can create your same Google account information in the shopping cart system. So in such a user case, you need just-in-time provision. So in WC2 Identity Server, so we have the capability to create users on the fly with just-in-time provisioning to any internal users tool, which is configured to WC2 Identity Server. And also one thing to be noted is just-in-time provisioning is configured against identity providers, not service providers. So just-in-time, provisioning is happening in the middle of an authentication flow where users created on the fly. So you don't really need an account in advance to have uh, to create an account. So let's see how you can achieve this with WSO2 Identity Server. So Yeah, so for that, so we have to, uh, so you, you need to have a WC2 identity server up and running. And let me show you what you need first in configuring just-in-time provision. So basically just-in-time provision is configured to an identity provider. So you need an identity provider to be configured. So right now for this demonstration, I'm using Google as my identity provider. So I have configured Google configurations. So I have client IDs and secret and the callback URL. And once you've done that, so the, we have an option in the identity provider configurations called just-in-time provision. So here by default, it will be no provisioning, but if you want just-in-time provisioning to be happen, you need to enable this. And this is the place where you can select your user store. So if you have multiple user stores configured, you can see set of uh, all those user stores listed down in this um, box. So you can select. So by default, it will be primary user store. And also there are like four options to be selected. So these four options are for four scenarios in just-in-time provisioning. So if you want to provision a user without his uh, user interaction or without knowing, then you should select provision silently. Then if you select this, user will, will not know that his account is created in the shopping cart system uh, he'll just feel only like he's logging through google and um, and doing whatever the things in the shopping cart and the other option is prompt for consent so if you are gdpr compliant and if you if you run your application with this gdpr compliancy you need to go with this prompt for consent which you ask your user for the consent to create a user account. So 
in these two scenarios, the user account will be created with the auto generated password in WC2 identity server. So user user doesn't know like his own credentials for this local account. But if you select this prompt password and consent, um, when when the user is authenticated from Google and provision to WC2 identity server, the user will be prompted with the option to set a password to his account. Then he can use this password to log into this system or the shopping cart system with this local username and password. And the other option is username, password and consent option where when where so if you give this option the user will uh, so when the user is federated to google and successfully authenticated from there the user will have to register an account in your shopping cart system and then only he can um, do the rest of the work in the shopping cart so i'll try to demonstrate like two of these today so let's see how provisioning silently happens. So I'll uh, update the identity provider configurations. And then to try this out, you need to have a service provider, which means a shopping cart application. Or for now, right now I'm using Pickup Dispatch, which is our sample application, which is an open ID connect application. So this open ID, config, uh, open ID Connect configurations I have created. And in the local and outbound, so we have to configure it as Google. So each time when a user try to log into this application, he will be redirected to Google. So that's it from the application side. And right now I don't have any users. So all my users who are logging to the application will be federated users. So let's see how this works. So I'm opening up a incognito window and so I'm trying to log into my shopping cart or pick up dispatch application. So here it will be redirected to Google. So um, I'm putting my username and password. I'm logging. I'm trying to log into Google. And I have two factor enabled. So then I'll get a Verification code three six nine four three seven. So once you've done that, upon successful login, so you will be redirected back to the application. Yes, so here you see, so this is a silent just in time provision. So you didn't see any consent or any other uh, password prompting. So let's see uh, whether the user has created or not. So if you list the users, in the management console. So my email was Dinali test at Gmail. So all my user information, which is captured from Google, has been recorded here silently. So here, I don't know this password because this is auto-generated. So um, let's try the other option we have. So I'll just delete this user because I have only one Google account. So in that case, I'm deleting this and I'll make the uh, just-in-time provisioning 
configurations to prompt for username and password for consent. So I'll update this. And let me try again. So pick up dispatch. So I'll try to log in to the pick up dispatch. So I'll get the email option where I put my email address and then my password. Yes, and I'll get a, another SMS OTP from Google. Zero four three seven nine two. So you can um so the mail will be redirected back to the application. So so now you will you'll see a prompt to enter a username. So I'll enter my username as Dinali because uh, now it's not my Gmail um, username. So this is for a local account. So it populates the rest of my information. Only my password is remaining. So I'll just put my password. And yeah, so this is like self-registration after all. Like. During the login flow, you will get a self-registration. If you enable just-in-time provisioning with username, password, and consent. So that's it how you can work with um, work just-in-time provisioning with WSO2 Identity Server. So hope you enjoyed the video. So if you have any questions, I think we can take it now. So please feel free to add it into this live chat so that I can take it right now. So hope you enjoyed this um, video with us, the, the episode of Just-in-Time Provisioning with identity in 15. So we'll join again yeah, with another episode of WSO2 identity server. So till then, good night and stay safe.